object. And you can see here very dense objects like these pieces of wood, they'll have very bright, bright faces. And that's because of the density. So that's actually where it's going into the bottom. That's where it's going into the bottom, exactly. Yep. And sometimes you can even see, you know, like around the base of a piling, how it'll create like a little pocket and current and stuff like that. You can sometimes even see that on your image once you get dialed in. So how many pilings are there that so, we're looking at? So we're looking at two. And I want to explain this scenario to you guys. So this specific dock here has a fixed, so as you know in the low country, our docks go up and down. So we have to have a floater and we have to have a fixed dock. Some people come down with a fixed dock and they go to the side with their floater. Some people go off the front, depending on what OCRM says, what the water depth allows, things like that. So with this structure here, you've got two pilings coming off. Those are gonna be my floater pilings, right? Because they're this, this specific uh, pier here has the floater off the end of the fixed dock, not to the side. So here's the oyster bank. This is all oysters. And then you've got the dock just out on the edge of the oysters. And this is 50 feet to my right of the vessel. As you can see, see this marker down here? That marker is 65 feet to the right of me and 9.7 feet of water. So you've got the pilings, the elongated pilings that come out to the school of fish. You guys with me? See that mm -hmm. right here? So that comes out to the school of fish. That's going to be the pilings that are on the inside of the floater. And if you look very closely, you have a bright yellow line right here. Well, that bright yellow line is a huge indicator for me because what that is, is that's the outer edge of the, that's the outer edge of the floater. So that tells me, okay, so if that's the outer edge of the floater, these fish are between, they're basically on the inside edge of the floater. So I want to put my bait, I want to put one bait, if the tide's going out, so it's drifting that way, I'm going with the current, because that's how I get the best image. <coughs> so tide's going out, I'm going to set up up here on this side of the dock, and I'm going to allow my piece of bait to drift into that dock, but if I'm fishing artificials, I'll stage up on the front side, or the, or the down current side and work down current because fish are always nine times out of 10 going to be facing into the current. With cut bait or dead bait, you want to be fishing up current because you want that, that scent traveling into that school of fish and they'll work their way up to it. With the artificial, you want to bring it back across their face and back to you, not from behind them. So if I was fishing artificials, I'd set up on the down current side of the dock. If I was fishing cut bait, I'd set up on the upside current. And you can see there might be a one fish there on the outer edge of that floater, but most of those fish, I mean, this is probably 50 to 100 fish. Uh, and these fish here were ranging from 20 to 30 inches. So uh, you've got these pilings. So I would put one bait, so here, this see this second set of pilings here that goes back and then it get, it, you get more pilings in the photo there? So that's the fixed dock. So this is the outer edge of the fixed dock. This is the two pilings holding the floater. So I'm gonna put one bait under the ramp going down to the floater, and I'm gonna put another bait up under the floater and try and drift it up in there with that tide. Leave my bail open and let it carry it back under there. If I'm gonna throw our officials, I like setting up on that downside and doing somewhat of like a pitch or a skip and skip it up under that ramp, let it sink down to the bottom. As we know, redfish, they're not up in the water column. They're sitting down on the bottom. So I mean just drift. Sometimes I don't even reel. I just sweep and then reel back down and just sweep. And that's when they're sitting down in that deep water, that, that's going to be the best retrieval nine times out of ten. So, a lot going on in this image, a lot to learn here. Uh, like I said, you've got the outer edge of the floater, uh, you've got the two pilings, as you can imagine, holding, you know, if this was my floating dock, this was the middle of the river, those two pilings are right here with the piling rings going around them, and then you've got the ramp coming down to it, and those fish are sitting right between those two pilings. And the reason they're there is not only because of the cooler water or the, you know, structure, the food, 
They're there for protection from humans and dolphins. <laughs> dolphins will feed on a 30 to 35 inch redfish all day long. I catch them like that, those big scars down their side, flipper doesn't mind. So with these, with these redfish, what they're doing is they have the protection of the floater above them, and they've got the protection of these pilings on either side of the school. So they're kind of pinned from all angles and they get that sense of protection. And when I find them in situations like this, normally they're ready to eat. When you put something down there, they feel safe, they feel comfortable, and they're ready to feed. So um, does anybody see anything in this image that I didn't cover that you have a question about? I have a question. Yeah. Um, I didn't see before, when you said the bright yellow mm -hmm. that's marking the outside of it's, that, you mean that real fine line right there, right? Yes, this, okay. bright, this bright yellow line right there. Yeah. And okay. in some images, you can even see a black line through it for each individual float. Now, let me remind you guys, this is the new Humminbird technology. This came out in January. Uh, you are getting these images, uh, you know, a few years back as well. Uh, what what is increasing in the technology is the range. Um, before this, the range was really only 30, 40 feet. Now, as you see, I'm marking pretty clear oyster beds out to 100 feet. The range is almost out to 200 feet. So, with that increase in technology, that's going to allow me to get out to the reef and be able to utilize this for our reef species as well. Your cobia, your spade fish your big black drum, when they start moving in, you'll be able to mark those like a sort of tunnel. So all of this through here, all, diff all different things that point out, uh, that show me what's going on down on the bottom. Uh, and I know that bright line is very tough to see, but it's just elongated here on the outside of that school of fish. I understand. It's a bright line. It's it's the floater. Yep, the outer edge of the floater. Why is there a bright line on the other side of the website? Over here? Like, like this bright yellow line? Yeah. That's, that's, like that's a lot. Here I'm pointing to it, if you, and if you get real yeah, close to it, it it's pop it straight to the bottom. It's a, no, no, sir, there's a line. There's a bright yellow line right here that's about this long. And it's, it's a little bit, I know it's tough to see, but it, later on I can pull this picture up and you guys can get real close. Uh, and that that little bright, so I'm running at the distance of it right there. Looks like you have to pop yeah. the bottom of the that, No, sir. No, sir. It's going to be the length of the dock. So you see these two pilings here? Those are on the outer edges of the of the floater. So that's that's the box right there. Okay. That's what you're seeing. Well, why does that yellow line go all the way from the top to the bottom? That's just because I've got my set my sensitivity and my contrast cranked up to make those shadows pop. That's why those shadows are popping so much because I have that sensitivity and that contrast cranked up. So if there was a fish down here in that that bright yellow, he would just pop. It would just be black. So that's why I have, and that's as you can see, you have different palettes here. Um, you can choose different colors. You may be say, I like this. You, you may be looking at this saying, I like this, mine doesn't look like this. Well, and all of them change colors. You can go on, they have blue and green and yellow and red. I like the yellow versus the black because you're trying to mark shadows. Yellow's very bright and uh, the black obviously is very dark and so you can see the, the differentiations there very well. Uh, so you don't really change palettes for different tribes? No, just run no man, I love, once you, it's all about getting used to something and knowing what you're looking for. And I'll show, this is like, this is about as clear uh, as you're gonna mark these fish. Uh, I mean, this is incredible. I'm gonna show you guys some pictures here in a little bit uh, that you won't even, you, you may not even see what I'm seeing. Because I know now, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go home and I'll save this picture and I'll go home and I'll sit down and I'll look at all the tiny little marks around it, right? Because those are fish too. And I'll look at those marks and I'll pay attention to those marks. And if I know that there's some fish around this dock, like eight out of 10 times I go to this dock and I cast by that pilot and I catch fish. Well, the other two times you waste 30 minutes sitting there, right? So I'm gonna ride by that pilot and I'm gonna focus on that one pilot. And if I see any marks that look like these marks, I, I pretty much know what they are. And so pay attention to your fishery, pay attention to your image, and try to repeat it. Try to 
you know, have something to always go off of. And that's what Dave came out with. He's like, I just want to know what I'm looking at. You know, I just want to see it one time. And what that one time was for me is last year I was on the Challenge Series with Shimano. We traveled from Connecticut to Texas to Louisiana fishing for all different species on all different boats with all different technology. And uh, when I was up in Connecticut, we, uh, the guy that I was with had hummingbird on his boat. And we rode all through the Long Island Sound for three days fishing, sun up to sundown. And he completely relied on sign imaging for those stripers. And that's, I mean, he would tell me, cast 30 feet to the left, 20 feet off the bow. And I mean, sure enough, that's right where those school of fish were. And I was like, man, I have the same unit. I should be able to do this. So I went back home and started digging up and doing research, and then I was able to get that same image that he was. And so it's all about, one, and it's, it's a big relief when you mark that first fish and you know that it's a fish, you threw in there, you caught those fish, or uh, you, know, you, you know those fish are in that spot and then you see them and you get a grasp on your, on your screen of what those fish are, that's what you wanna do. And that's why I'm telling you, I'll go home, it's not these big marks. Like these big marks are obviously fish to me. You know, they're in a tight school there. They're right where a redfish would typically sit on a dead low tide. Uh, and that's another thing. This image was taken at a dead low tide. Or not necessarily, it was an outgoing tide. Uh, but the water was out of the grass. What do, what do redfish do normally when the tide gets high? They go shallow, right? they go up in the grass, they go up on the oysters, and they become more difficult to mark on the side of the thing. I don't use it a lot on the high tide for the redfish uh, because they're just not where I'm gonna find them very well. So this is a technology that I like to use uh, for the redfish in the docks, mainly from the bottom, you know, when the water's out of the grass, basically. But that, it doesn't hurt to cut it on because I've caught redfish under docks at dead high tide. So, it, it never hurts to cut it on and take a look. Where is that, that image, I pay attention to those little small details. And when you're looking at your screen, you can see it better than up on this TV. But inside of here, there's also a little patch of fish in here uh, that's just inside of those fish that are a little bit smaller. And believe it or not, those are the slot fish. These are the over slot fish. And so those tiny marks replicate these larger marks. They're just much smaller. You're not always going to get this perfect image. It's not a perfect world. So when you're looking for those marks, don't always look for the obvious. Look for the real small marks uh, once you know what you're looking for. So you're, you're scanning out to left and right 100 feet, which is 10 times in depth. I mean, that's, is that kind of where you only set it? 10 uh, times in depth? Not necessarily. That's a great question. Um, if I'm in, it's all about the clear reading that I'm getting. You know, you, you play with it and you see what the current and the conditions are allowing you. If the boat's rocking real bad, you may not get a clear reading out to 100, 150 feet uh, if you have that range. But uh, if you're in a super stable condition and you can get that range, then obviously use it because you know you may just be off the fish a little bit. So definitely use um, that range and adjust it as necessary. But um, I'm marking fish, you know, if you're in 25 feet of water, I'll still leave it. I basically leave it on 100 most of the time for me. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm doing some fishing in like real shallow, hard bottom, like out on the front beach, and you can get a great image way out if it's calm, then I'd crank it up, you know, as high as it would let me go, which with this new unit is 200 feet. So, and that's 200 feet down and out. So you can get a great image uh, there out to that distance. What, uh, what, in, what unit are you running? Um, Simrad. Simrad? Nice. Yep. So that's what Dave is running, and we'll get on, on to the next <coughs> slide here. Real quick. Yeah, go You get here at 9-2 where the boat is, but you're saying over at 65 foot is 9-7? Yes, there's a trough there. That's why those fish are kind of sitting in there. So my boat's out on the front, and actually I'm on a bend in a creek here. So when it hits those oysters, it's kind of like a trough that it creates there. It's actually a little bit deeper on the inside right there. So wherever you set that uh, bullseye, it'll, you can, it'll compute the depth for yep. you where that is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So here you've got, and then also it'll, it'll tell you as we get far. I've got the different, the different um, 
that tells you what each one of these are telling you. And this isn't on all units, you know, every unit portrays it a little bit differently. Hey Jen, when you say you go home, I mean, do you have, is it Bluetooth or a screenshot that you, um, you put so it in the house? The, on the computer? How I'm capable of getting these real clear images for you guys, even when I blow them up like this, is I'm actually taking a screenshot. So my, my unit allows me to screenshot that image instead of saving it or taking a picture with my cell phone and it becoming real, uh, you know, real blurry or, you know, hurt affected by the sunlight on the screen. Right. So, and most newer units definitely take uh, screenshots. It's just maybe a sequence of buttons that you have to learn in your manual. <clears throat> Great question. Is that? Yes, sir. Take a short break? Take a short break? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, everybody, you yeah, yeah, so uh, moving on from this picture, I know we've been on this one a lot. Uh, I just really like this image, like I said, it's got a lot of different details uh, that can teach you a lot about what we're looking at. Uh, does anybody see anything else on there that they would like to have any questions about? Are you zoomed in on any address? No, no, that's all. That's completely open. It's, uh, that's not focused on any structure. And you'll see later on what, where I zoom in on, a, on an object and see. Uh, so moving forward here. Ben, I have a quick question. Would well, you be the same image if you're sitting still or do you, if you're moving? Is no, that so you're that's, still that's a great question. No, you actually get a terrible image when you're sitting still. You want to be moving. Oh, okay. uh, if, you, if I'm sitting still on side imaging, it's all blurred out. I'm not, you got to be at least in here, you know, some kind of movement. I mean, you can see here I'm moving 1.9 miles an hour. Uh, so I'm not moving fast at all, but you do have to make sure. One to four miles an hour is your, your prime, the prime speed. <laughs> and so, you know, I've got my depth, my speed, and my water temp there. So, and then moving forward. So here, here we go. I've got settings pulled up. So I want to show you guys something here. Uh, you got two images that are in pretty similar depth. Uh, you know, it's a little bit shallower over here uh, than it is over here. But with that being said, over here, this is um, at right by a sandbar. So that's why you have these hills in the sand. You know, if you've ever been out of a sandbar or out on the beach and you see how the bottom is, it's not flush. It has some ripple effect to it from the current. So that's what you're seeing here in that image. Uh, but it's very bright. Uh, and the reason being is uh, you would think bright is great. Uh, but too bright can be a bad thing because I don't have any shadow. I'm not casting any shadow here as much as I would like to. So that's because my contrast there is turned down to nine. Uh, and each boat or each unit is going to have, uh, or each brand of unit is going to have a different setting for that contrast as far as the scale goes. But this, my contrast here is a little bit lower than I like to keep it. Over here, it's set at 15. So uh, over here, it's at 9. Over here, it's at 15. As you can see, it's popping these shadows a lot better. Uh, so make sure, like I said earlier, make sure your contrast is turned up. As you can see, my sensitivity is way up as well. But if you jack that sensitivity up too much, it'll become very pixelated. And so you want to fine tune. And every situation is different. So you want to make sure that you're always playing with those settings. You know, there's no set setting, set number that I can tell you guys uh, that you know, you're going to be able to run on and get a perfect image. It's, it's not like that. You've got to always play with those settings. And, but with that being said, I do have some basic, a basic idea of where I want to be. You know, I'm not turning that contrast all the way down to one for certain situations and then all the way back up. I'm always leaving it anywhere between 12 and 16 uh, is where, I, where my magic number is for the areas that I'm fishing. Uh, with this bottom, like I was saying, the brighter, see how this is super bright? That's sand, that's that real hard sand. And then as you get over here, this is actually very muddy, uh, right at the base of the oysters. So I'm getting a little bit more of a darker shade than I would off the sand. So you can tell 
uh, I, when I was striker fishing, the guide would actually use the coloration of the image to tell me what the content of the bottom was. Like if we were looking for a sandy area or a muddy area or a slightly, you know, an area with some gravel in it, uh, you can tell by the coloration of that image. And go by an area that you know is real sandy or that you know is real muddy and remember what it looks like so later on you know you can pay attention to where those fish are. Like if I find it kind of coincidental that these fish are sitting on the edge of that hard and soft bottom there where it kind of transitions to the bank. Uh, that, that's something that you maybe want to pay attention to. Uh, little details like that can help you enhance your catching and what you're looking for. So the picture on the right, I can see the fish, so are the fish, are the fish there, There's no fish, there's, this is a totally separate image. Yeah, this is, this is kind of, I didn't get this image uh, I, should, I would have liked to have gotten it with the contrast turned down uh, with the same image, but these are two screenshots. I'm out there guiding, so these are all screenshots, and I'm like, oh, you know, grab it. I'm trying to bait five hooks and do a bunch of things. Yeah. So these aren't, you know, your catalog images, which you guys want. These are images off my boat while I'm guiding right here in the local area. And so what I've got here is I'm actually turning. That's why it's distorted. Uh, and that's another good point. Try to always, if you have, a, like I have a section of five docks or 10 docks that you know there's a school of redfish that likes to work that <laughs> section of dock. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I'm, I've got my, I've got it all to the right. Um, you come fluctuating between one and four miles an hour. Uh, and I'm tracking on a straight line going with the current. Those are like the four main things that, I'm, that are going through my mind when I'm running down a, a set of structure. So same thing with the jetties, if you were riding down the jetties. And a lot of people think when they're fishing the jetties, they have to get right in the rocks. You don't have to get right in the rocks because a lot of times the fish are sitting down in the sand uh, at the base of the rocks. Similar to like what these fish are doing. You know, you've got that bank, you've got that oyster bank coming down. And they're right there uh, off the oysters, out on the out on the hard bottom. They're not on. They're not sitting over any shell here. You would see it if it was there, um, because like you can see here, all these oysters. You know, these fish are out way off the oysters, and they'll do that same thing at the jetty. Like if this if this was the rock pile, uh, you know, I've been catching them on soft plastics with you know your quarter ounce eye strikes, getting down deep and getting off those rocks and dragging in that sand and you find real big flounders laying down there in trout and things like that. And so riding down that rock, pay attention out on that sand off the rocks there um, because just like in this little system of docks here, you can uh, use that just like you can at the jetties. So very similar situation. And I've found schools of trout off the rocks doing that. Uh, schools of bull reds, uh, tarpon, you name it. There, it, the bigger the fish, the easier it's going to show up. And uh, I'll get to an image here in a little bit of an alligator. Uh, so as you get larger, the larger the object, the better it's going to show. So you know, I get that question: Is it showing panfish? Yes. I have buddies, like I said, that are getting images of crappie. So you you can get smaller fish along with bigger fish. And of course, the bigger fish are going to show up better. So here, it gets out. I'm getting a decent image on my left side. But when I go over to the right side, much clearer. See the difference there with the oysters, the, the just the differences between the structure. It's just much clearer to me. I like it on that right side with my transducer. So moving forward from this, anybody see anything they got any questions about about these two images? On that right hand image, mm -hmm. the center line portion of it where it, it's it's narrow at the bottom. Yep. You said that was caused by turning the boat? No, sir. So this uh, where it's distorted right here, like you can almost see the lines turning and, and then it and then it clears back up, like right here it's rougher and then it clears back out. So I'm turning off the shallow water. This, the black section here in the middle, that's actually underneath you. So well, why, why is it narrower at the bottom of the Because deep? I'm in shallower water. Okay, you are. So, yeah, so you as you get that. deeper, that, that middle section there, that darker section in the center is gonna get larger yeah. okay. because that's underneath you. 
And that's what I was telling you about, about finding the bait. When you look on the, so here is off the left edge of your boat, and here is off the right edge of your boat. So if I'm, I've got my down imaging on over here, all of a sudden that bait shows up, I know they're under the boat, they're right there, you've got to act quick. So what I'll do is, and I'll quick look over here, I'll be standing on the back of the, the, back of the boat or the front of the boat, and turn your unit around or have the buddy tell you um, what's going on. And then as soon as you see it show up on that side imaging, it's on the left, you throw it off the left side of the boat. It's on the right, you throw it off the right side of the boat. But you'll see the bait in the water column, and we'll get to that. I have pictures of big schools of men hating. Uh, so...